We're going to be in the book of Genesis. Genesis uh, 13. Genesis chapter number 13. And uh, that'll be page 21 if you have an old Schofield Bible. Genesis chapter number 13. And good morning. Man, good to be here in God's house. Appreciate you being here. And uh, those of you that will be watching on the front row, thank you for tuning in. I had some folks tell me this week uh, that they watch. They don't uh, uh, always leave comments, but they get to watch on the front row. And uh, so it's a good alternative for them. I know some folks, uh, you know, have sickness and so I can't always make it to to church, and so this is a good outlet for them. I'm glad we are able to do it. Amen. God has uh, uh, blessed us in, in that way. Amen. Uh, and it looks like uh, you know the weather's changing uh, a little bit cooler. I don't know how long it's going to last, but uh, it uh, it feels pretty good to me. Uh, amen. I, I kind of like it. Uh, what we call it fat boy weather. <laughs> Amen. Uh, all right. So we uh, remind you, uh, please remember all the folks on the prayer list. Uh, got a lot of sick folk. Pray for them. Uh, uh, Benny's mom, uh, she needs your prayers, uh, Dorsey, and pray for Benny. Uh, he's had a lot of uh, issues and a lot of pain, so remember him. And uh, Sister Margaret's in a lot of pain. If you would, remember her. And, uh, Sister Polly, Sister Lottie, and Pray that uh, God would have his way. Uh, uh, Jackie, if you would, remember her. And uh, Bobby Miles. Uh, Bobby would be going in for surgery the 29th of this month. Uh, had a, uh, a spot they found on his lungs, and um, they're going to take that out. I talked to Bobby the other day, and, and he said the doctor said that, uh, you know, the spot had been there all along since the cancer had started, but it hadn't been doing anything. Uh, it wasn't growing, just sitting there. Uh, but now it's kind of starting to grow, and uh, they won't take it out. But the good news is uh, they think it's encapsulated, and uh, they can get it all out without him having to take chemo or radiation. Uh, and that is great news. Uh, so pray for Brother Bobby. Uh, he said, you know, I was hoping to be back to work by now until they found this. Uh, but now, he said, maybe by first of the year. He said, I, I'm ready to go back to work. I'm bored to death. <laughs> so... Uh, you uh, uh, you pray for uh, Brother Bobby. You pray that God would have his way. Uh, I ask your prayers too. Uh, for some reason, I, my uh, my blood sugar has been uh, acting crazy here lately. Can't seem to keep it in line. It's up, spiking up and dropping down, and uh, you know. So I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, and uh, but anyway, y'all pray for me. All right, Genesis chapter number thirteen. Uh, let's start at verse number five. Uh, and Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not, could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and the uh, Canaanite and the Perizzite that dwelled in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let's, uh, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Uh, is not the whole land uh, before thee? Uh, separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lift up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that was, it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from another. And Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, the blessings that you have given us, uh, bestowing upon us all these uh, 
uh, riches, God, that you've given us, uh, spiritual blessings, all these things. We thank you. Thank you for your word. I pray now that you might uh, uh, drive back opposing powers of Satan uh, today. Help us, Lord, that we might say and do those things that will be pleasing unto these. I pray, God, that you'd speak to the lost and save them uh, before it's too late. In Christ's name and for his sake, we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, well, verse number 10 said, Lot lift up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest into Zohar. I want to uh, preach a few minutes and give you a few thoughts this morning on uh, making the wrong choice. The wrong choice of Lot. It seemed, uh, you know, on the outset, it seemed like it might have been a good choice. Uh, Lot's herdmen and Abram's herdmen were having trouble. They were having trouble uh, with the uh, people who uh, were in the land. The Bible said the Canaanites uh, and the Perizzites. Uh, and as one uh, uh, preacher said, uh, Dr. McGee said, uh, the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Amorites and uh, the electric lights, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you, you read about all those uh, in, in the Bible. But so they're having trouble. And Abram said, uh, well, let's uh, settle this. We're brethren. We should be able to get along. Uh, and that makes sense. Amen. Uh, so he said, if you decide to go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you decide to go to the right, I'll go to the left. I give you the first choice. And so Lot lifted up his eyes over the plain of Jordan, and he saw that well-watered land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, if you look toward that land today, it is anything but a well-watered land. It is desert. And scrub brush is about all that grows there. As you look down toward the Dead Sea in that area, uh, and uh, you know, archaeologists are, are saying that uh, uh, recently, I guess this year, uh, they found some ruins uh, that they thought might possibly have been from Sodom and Gomorrah, and uh, you know, everything there had been uh, destroyed, and uh, it looked like a catastrophic fire to them. Uh, and it was in the right area, and so they're still working on that. Uh, but listen, uh, uh, this happened, uh, you know, a long time ago. This We're looking back in history about 4,000 years. Uh, and, and men uh, uh, haven't really changed, and sometimes, uh, Brother Andrew, we make the wrong choices. I remember as a, as a young fellow growing up, uh, I, I might have been, I don't know, five years old at the time, and my, I was with my dad. Uh, and we'd gone to uh, uh, some land that my, my grandparents uh, used to uh, have, and they still owned it, but uh, uh, they, uh, they lived on it when they were young. Uh, uh, and the land, uh, you know, set across the New River. Uh, you could get to it uh, by boat, by going uh, across the river, or you could come in the back way and, and travel across the hills. And they had a house there that overlooked... Uh, uh, the New River, and, and uh, you know, a beautiful uh, view. And uh, I, I was there with Dad. We were doing some work. There's a fellow that lived uh, uh, nearby, and uh, his name was uh, Bob Taylor. Benny probably remember Bob. Uh, and uh, uh, Bob called to me uh, there. I, uh, he was at the edge of the house. He said, come here. Uh, and I went, and he held out his hand, and he had two coins in his hand. And uh, one was uh, uh, a, a bit larger than the other. Uh, and, and Bob told me, he said, hey, you can, uh, you can pick one of these. Which one do you want? You can have either one of these. Well, I'm, you know, what, five years old, something like that. I didn't know anything about coins or the value of coins or anything like that. And, uh, you know, my, my brothers were there, and I remember them telling me, you know, pick this one, pick this one. And, 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 uh, uh, but they didn't mean anything to me. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I did the thing that I thought was right. I, I picked the larger one. Well, what, uh, uh, what he had was he had a nickel and a dime, and, and I picked a nickel uh, instead of the dime. Well, it was at least five cent more than, uh, than I had because at the time I didn't have anything. Amen. And, 
uh, this was when a nickel would buy you something. You know, you could get a big, uh, uh, a big drink uh, for a nickel in, in those days. You know, uh, uh, not like today where it costs you, you know, a couple of bucks for a drink. You could go in and get a 16 ounce drink for a, for five cents. You know, imagine that. No tax either. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, and anyway, uh, uh, but I made the wrong choice. I chose uh, based on sight. I remember talking to a lady, uh, you know, several years ago uh, uh, who uh, was running a small business, and uh, she had retired after uh, 30 years with the Greensboro Police Department. I got talking to her, and, uh, uh, you know, I knew some folks down there, and she knew those folks, and we were just having a conversation, and, and uh, uh, you know, she said, uh, were you in the police department? I said, well, no. I, I thought about it, and I said, actually, uh, uh, you know, I was offered a job. I, I interviewed. I, I uh, went through the test and went to see the uh, the shrink and you know all that kind of stuff. And and uh, uh, they called me up one day and told me uh, they'd offer me a job. You know, uh, if I wanted it. And uh, you know, I, I uh, this is something I kind of always leaned toward uh, and uh, wanted to do, but I couldn't settle it in my heart. And, and ultimately, I decided you know that I would. Uh, uh, stick to preaching uh, instead of policing. And, uh, you know, the lady I was talking to, uh, she said, you made the right decision. Uh, she said, you know, God would not have been pleased for you to have leave the path that he called you to. Amen. We all make choices. Amen. Some of them good, some of them bad. And we all have to live uh, uh, with those choices. I'm sure there's probably in your life, sometimes you can look back and say, boy, if I had it to do over again, I would have done things differently. I have those. I have, Brother Wesley, some things uh, in my life where, uh, you know, I, I wish I had done things a little differently. Amen. Uh, but it's in the past, you know. Uh, I, I remember uh, years uh, years ago, uh, back in the early 70s, and I used to work at Sears, and Sears uh, I said, uh, you know, we're uh, facing some cutbacks, and, and I had a boss who I've always respected uh, for what he did. He called me and probably five others in the office and said, look, fellas, uh, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but, but come the end of the year, you're going to be without a job. You need to start looking for Work. I, have, I always admired uh, him for that uh, because he gave us a heads up. And he was right. Uh, one of uh, uh, us that were called in didn't believe it, and guess what? He lost his job. Uh, well, we were out looking, and uh, 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 one day I, uh, I opened the mailbox. You know, we didn't have smartphones and all that. We had uh, a landline, and that was about it. I opened the mailbox, and there's a letter in there from the government, uh, and they said, uh, we want you to come uh, to uh, downtown Greensboro, and uh, we want you to take some tests, and we want you uh, uh, to, uh, you know, look about a job. And so I went uh, and took a battery of tests and did an interview and all that, and they uh, uh, they offered me uh, a job, a government job, you know, uh, good uh, pay, uh, good benefits, all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, you know, I could have been uh, retired already, uh, I guess, had I taken the job, but I, I turned it down. Uh, because uh, the stipulation was uh, uh, you can have the job, but you have to start on third shift and work your way toward first shift. And I said, well, how long does that take? Well, it may take a year, it may take two, it may take five. And I said, well, you know, I've been working uh, 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 oddball shifts now for a long time and, and got uh, children at home, and I, I was just kind of tired of working uh, uh, the graveyard shift, and I wasn't too excited about starting on third shift, and I said, well, uh, I'll pass, you know. Uh, uh, and uh, I've looked back a time or two and said, well, maybe I should have uh, uh, taken that, you know, and dealt with it, uh, uh, but uh, the choices that we make, amen, choices that we make. Lot, uh, the Bible said, verse 10, lifted up his eyes and beheld. Uh, Lot looked, it's the first thing, he looked, uh, and he looked in the wrong direction. Amen. The Bible said in Proverbs 14, there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. There's only one way. 
that will get us out of this world uh, and get us into the next world uh, in a good standing, and that is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why I've learned through the years that uh, every decision that we make ought to be uh, brought before the Lord before we make it. Every decision, whether we're buying a house, if we're buying a car, uh, if we're seeking out somebody, uh, you know, uh, to have fellowship with, or if we are, uh, you know, looking for somebody, uh, those that are, that are in that realm looking to date or to get married, uh, how often have you uh, heard of folks, uh, a young girl who uh, sees a young uh, uh, lad and she's like, boy, uh, you know, he's got everything uh, I'm looking for. He's handsome. He's uh, smart. Uh, he's funny. He's all of these things. Uh, uh, he's just not a Christian, and I am. Well, I'm going to marry him anyway because uh, I think uh, if I marry him, uh, you know, he says he'll go to church with me and, and uh, he'll have a change of heart. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what's going to happen in that uh, scenario. Uh, he's going to pull her out instead of her pulling him in. Amen. That's the way it always works. I don't think I've ever seen uh, uh, it work the other way. It's always, uh, you know, he'll go for a while because he's excited about the marriage and he wants it to uh, gel and settle, but then one day he's going to say, you know, I, I'll let you go today. I don't think I'm going to go. I'm going to stay here and watch TV. I, I, I remember a testimony in a, in a revival meeting several years ago uh, uh, of a man uh, uh, who stood up and, and uh, he had uh, recently gotten saved. He was probably in his 50s, somewhere along in there, and he had married a, a wife in that situation. She was a Christian and he was not. And he promised her all these things. And over time, uh, he uh, went back on his promises and he said, I'm not going. Uh, in fact, he just turned against the Lord and against her. And, and not only would he not go with her, but he didn't want her to go. Uh, and, and he told about how he got so uh, uh, angry uh, about her going uh, uh, that she said, well, I'm going to church because uh, I, I want to serve the Lord. And you can stay here at home if you want to, but I'm going to the house of the Lord. And he went and got the gun and shot the tires out of the car uh, to keep her from going to church. And I think she, uh, she ended up walking anyway. Well, over time, uh, God was dealing with his heart. He was already dealing with his heart. And he was down there at the barn milking the cows on a Sunday uh, evening, uh, uh, and they were getting ready to have church, uh, uh, and God got to dealing with his heart. Uh, and, and he fell off the milk stool uh, and got down on his knees and said, God, forgive me for what I've been doing. I want to give my heart to the Lord. Uh, uh, and uh, he came walking in uh, about middle ways of the service uh, and went down. Uh, the preacher was preaching uh, uh, and saw him coming in. Uh, and he said, uh, you know, can we help you, brother? Can we help you come on in? And he came down to the front of the church and he said, I got to confess uh, 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 what a sinner I've been, and I have just asked the Lord uh, to save me. Now, uh, you know, it turned out well, but all the years that she had to endure uh, of his, uh, you know, uh, snarky remarks and, and shooting the tires out of the car and all that kind of stuff, I, I mean, uh, usually it never works out that way. Amen. Lot, Lot looked, but he looked in the wrong direction. How many Christians do you know that have been enticed away from the things of God that look good? Because they were looking with the physical eye. Property, possessions, popularity, power, all of those things. And there are people today uh, who are fixated on those things. I've met people in the working world uh, and all they're interested in is climbing the corporate ladder. And they do not care who they step on to climb the corporate ladder. Amen. Oh, it's tempting. It's tempting sometimes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, they... Uh, uh, dangle things out in front of you and all this kind of stuff about how they're going to do. But let me tell you what, uh, if you're in the working world, uh, uh, let me give you some shocking news. Uh, the company you don't, uh, you work for doesn't care uh, a thing about you. They don't. I remember several years ago, I, uh, I was offered a, a, a move, a position. Uh, I was in Greensboro at the time, and they said, come to Winston-Salem. We'll give you a, a, a job there. We want you to start up a new uh, department in this division. We're going to consolidate 
uh, the 21 officers across uh, North Carolina, and then we're going to go from that. We're going to consolidate South Carolina and Georgia and all of this, and, and we want you to be at the helm. We want you to run it. And I said, okay, that sounds like a good opportunity. So I got there. We started building the department, and and uh, I hired a bunch of people uh, uh, to work from all over the place. Some of them came from uh, local, uh, you know, most of them were local folks from Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and that uh, surrounding area. I, I had some that, uh, you know, had other jobs. That uh, One lady who came from Lockbox that was down in Charlotte, she was uh, having troubles in her marriage, and her and her husband had separated. She wanted to move, and so she came to Winston-Salem for work, uh, and I put her to work. And, and uh, after I got everybody settled, uh, you know, they came in and said, uh, 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 HR came, and they said, we need to talk to you. And I said, okay and they said we've looked at all your employees that you've got uh, and they're all uh, under the minimum and I said okay they probably are I said that you know uh, they came from other departments they're brand new to me and they said we understand that but you got to get them up to at least the the minimum and I said I, I don't have any problem with that uh, I, I said uh, you know it, it's it's not my money it's the bank's money and uh, you got minimums for a reason uh, and and uh, we can set about a plan. But I said, i got to talk to my boss, uh, and I'm not sure how he's going to think about this because it's going to put a hole in the budget. And uh, she said, well, i got your back on that. I'll talk to him. And I said, okay, uh, then I'll write him up. You know, I said, but i got one request. She said, what's that? I said, there's one other person in that department who's below the minimum. And she said, who's that? I said, me. I said, you know, they offered me this job, and the minimum is uh, here, and, uh, you know, since I took the job, they haven't given me an increase, uh, but I'm doing, uh, you know, ten times more work. I, I would like to be, you know, I'll be the last one after I get all my employees up, but I said, I want to be looked at too. Yeah, we'll take care of you. All right. So we went through this process. It took me six months or so to have all the, uh, you know, uh, performance evaluations and to send everything through, get my boss to sign off on, got them all up to uh, uh, at least the minimum. Uh, and actually, I did a little bit better than that. Uh, and, and so some of them got pretty healthy increases. Uh, and, and that was good. I, I, you know, I was glad for that. Uh, but then when my turn came, uh, you know, I never heard anything. Dried up on the vine. And it took, uh, you know, four Four years, probably, before I got an increase, and then it still wasn't the minimum. You know, my boss came to me, my new boss at that time came to me and said, we're going to give you an increase, a pretty good increase. I said, yeah, okay. What is it? He told me what it was, and I said, okay, that's that's great. He said, well, you don't seem pleased. I said, well, uh, I, I've been waiting five years uh, for this to get me up. I did my part of the job, uh, and you're giving me about half of, of what, uh, you know, where I should be. For what that position calls for and so no I wasn't truly a happy camper so it, it can be uh, you know and, and really I shouldn't have been concerned about that you know because God take care of me amen uh, I, and so uh, you know I, I thought then I've been losing sight of these things and and and, uh, and I got to get my mind on Lord I'm not saying you don't take care of yourself you should uh, amen uh, and companies ought to treat you uh, 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 right, and they ought to pay people right, and all of that. Uh, but I'm just saying, don't lose your vision and, and get uh, uh, concentrated on the world uh, uh, because the world doesn't care anything about you. They don't care uh, if you can live or die, really, because uh, if you uh, die, guess what? They're going to replace you, and they're going to keep right on moving, right on moving. The wrong direction he looked. The Bible said in James chapter 1, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it has finished, bringeth forth death. How many folks do you know who uh, got in church and they made a good start? And uh, they started serving the Lord and they were doing what God wanted them to do. And then uh, the devil kind of threw something out there in their path uh, and they jumped on that, uh, and before you know it, uh, uh, they're following the things of the world instead of the things of God. Now, Lot, don't mistake here, Lot was a, a, a saved man. The Bible said Lot, we know his story, but the Bible declares Lot was a righteous man. Read it for yourself. He was a righteous man. 1 Timothy chapter 6 said, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some 
coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money. Not money in itself. Although, you know, money uh, uh, can be dirty. Money's one of the dirtiest things you'll ever handle. Amen. Amen? Because it's been everywhere. You know, it's been everywhere. Uh, uh, we walk around with money in our pockets. Uh, we talk about wearing masks for COVID and all that stuff, and they tell you that uh, this stuff can live on surfaces for days. Uh, just think about the person that had that dollar bill uh, uh, before you had it. They may have sneezed on it. Uh, they may have wiped their nose on it, you know. I mean, money uh, can be a, a, a dirty thing. It's been everywhere. Uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, I've seen uh, uh, people, uh, uh, you know, that uh, look at money uh, uh, and, uh, you know, go after it, pick it up, uh, uh, pennies or whatnot. And, and I'll be honest with you, I never have been one uh, too much uh, uh, to pick up pennies because really uh, is, a, is a penny worth your time uh, uh, and worth the risk of uh, picking it up when, uh, I mean, uh, I, I know there's a value in it, but I'm just saying there's a risk uh, 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 because, uh, uh, you know, you never know why it's on the ground. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, Lot lived by sight. He made the decision on my side. He claimed the land that appeared best for raising flocks. He did not consult with the Lord. He just made a decision. Lot must have fallen in love with that country because uh, it reminded him of something. You say what? Well, let's read verse 10 again. And Lot lifted his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan. It was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. Reminded him of something. Like the land of Egypt. Maybe this is the reason he fell in love with that place. Egypt, uh, by the way, uh, was a rich place. Uh, the Israelites, when they left the land, the Bible said they spoiled the Egyptians. And when they came out and they were going to build a, a, a tabernacle and all that, they needed the things to uh, put together because there's a lot of brass and there's a lot of silver and there's a lot of gold and all that. Uh, and uh, Moses asked them for donations. And uh, it, it's one of the only times, uh, or maybe in fact the only time in the Bible I ever find where uh, they gave so much uh, that Moses said, stop bringing, we got enough. You know, uh, uh, how many preachers on TV have you ever uh, known to say, look, we appreciate your offerings and sending in your money, uh, uh, but stop giving because we got enough. No, that crowd's always saying, help me buy a new airplane because God told me I need it. Well, I wasn't here there when you and God had that conversation, you know. And we hear about folks today who are all concerned about uh, climate change and they want to uh, put uh, taxes on you for your carbon footprint and they don't want you to drive your car. They want to get us to where we're all driving electric cars that, you know, will only go about 300 miles before they die uh, and, and 30 miles an hour uh, while, uh, while they go there. Uh, uh, and if you're lucky, it won't catch on fire and burn up while, uh, in the middle of the route, you know. That's where they want us to go. Uh, we hear all those folks talking about climate change, and we see this little uh, foreign girl uh, running around shouting about climate change, uh, and what she needs to do is go back to school and, and uh, learn how to, uh, uh, you know, do things uh, at home. Uh, uh, you know, all these things are political. Uh, but these, uh, these uh, climate changers, uh, they don't uh, have any problem with getting on a jet uh, and, uh, and blowing out burnt kerosene across uh, the United States and across the ocean. Uh, all that don't count, they say. You know, well, let me get off the politics. Lot looked, and then he listened. He listened to the wrong voice. He said, what do you mean? Well, uh, uh, as a elder... Lot was the uncle, he was the elder, he was the head of the family, uh, he was the patriarch, uh, uh, and he had the right of choice. Uh, Lot was in this situation since he had left his family and come along with Abraham. Uh, uh, Abraham was a functioning father uh, uh, and a functioning priest uh, 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 for the family, uh, and uh, uh, Lot should have been saying, Uncle Abraham, what do you think? 
but he never did that. Abraham could have stepped up and said, this is what I think. You don't need to be going down to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah because uh, the Bible says here that the men uh, or the people of uh, uh, Sodom were wicked uh, sinners. And so this was knowledge. This was common knowledge. But Lot, uh, Abraham didn't do that, I guess, because he was trying to be kind to his uh, nephew Lot. And Lot didn't uh, ask uh, for his advice. He listened to the wrong voice. What voice is that? His conscience, you know. The world will tell you, let your conscience be your God. I tell you what, your conscience will drive you in the ditch. You better let God be your God. Amen. Lot lived for himself. His choice demonstrated a total lack of of respect and concern for his uncle Abraham and a total lack of disrespect and concern uh, for the wishes of God. Uh, Lot was all about, uh, like today's folk, uh, are all about my rights uh, and my wants and my needs and my life uh, and my career and my way. You know, that's what's happening in this world today. Everybody's concerned about itself. Read about yesterday in Philadelphia, uh, a young woman gets on the L train in Philadelphia, uh, and a man is on there, uh, and he rakes the woman on the L train while the L train's moving, and the people on the train uh, did nothing. They sat in their seats and watched. And you know who called the police? The train workers called the police, and when they stopped at the next stop, the police were waiting on him, and they arrested him. And I say amen to that. Uh, uh, and they say put him in jail no the, uh, the Bible calls for something a whole lot stronger than that you know uh, but, but it just really uh, uh, just boggles the mind that people would sit uh, and do nothing while a woman is being raped uh, right there in front of you where are all the men today amen I mean listen whether it was my wife or my daughter or my granddaughter or somebody else's wife or some, she's somebody's wife, she's somebody's daughter, she's somebody's sister, uh, I'm not going to sit by, uh, brother, and watch that happen as long as I can do something about it. You say, well, uh, it might cost you your own life. Well, it might. But I tell you what, I'm going to get a few good whacks in before he does me in. Amen. I'm not going to let that happen. But... I can't say I expect too much more out of Philadelphia. Amen. Our cities and uh, such today are more like zoos than they are like anything else. And there's uh, uh, animals uh, uh, living and occupy the city. And, and there's a few good folks thrown around in there. He uh, uh, lot looked uh, and then he labored. He labored. The Bible said Sodom was a wicked place. And so uh, uh, Lot was laboring in the wrong place. Uh, you know, uh, this is an old sin. Romans, uh, uh, Paul put it this way in the book of Romans, uh, men with men working that which is unseemly. Amen. And receiving in themselves the recompense uh, of uh, uh, their reward. You know, this is what this is a thing that nobody wants to talk about today. Is some of the things that we have uh, uh, unleashed upon the uh, society today uh, have come uh, uh, from sins that men and women are doing, and they brought it into society. Now, he became an elder. He's laboring, but he's laboring in the wrong place. He shouldn't have been there. He becomes an elder there. He was sitting at the gate. Uh, uh, i.e. the court of Sodom. The gate was a place that was uh, dedicated for the judges to come and people who had a, a gripe, uh, they would come and bring it to the judges to settle the matter. And so he became an elder in the city, in this wicked city of sin. Something else that happened while he was laboring. The Bible said uh, he had two daughters uh, uh, but the, and they were married. But if you read the story, the Bible said that uh, his sons-in-law, uh, when uh, the angels came and said, get your family out of here, and Lot went to uh, check his sons-in-law to get them out of there, uh, uh, the Bible said that they laughed at him and they mocked at him. And the Bible also said that his daughters were still virgins. Well, what does that tell you? It tells you that his son-in-laws, uh, there was something wrong with their wiring. 
You know, they were out in the world uh, and they were living the life uh, of Sodom and Gomorrah and his daughters had never known a man. Uh, they had married for convenience. Possibly uh, they had married somebody who was up in the upper echelons of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, and it was all for convenience and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, they weren't marrying for love uh, uh, or, or, or any of that. The Bible said in Romans 12, 2, be not conformed uh, or pressed into this world's mold, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean the devil stops working on you. In fact, he's going to begin to work on you. Because until you're saved, uh, you're his and you're doing his will you say, not me, preacher. Well, Jesus told the scribes and Pharisees, ye are of your father, the devil. And so uh, the bad news is, if you're not saved, ye are of your father, the devil. And the Bible said, uh, his uh, lust ye will do. What does it say about lust? When lust has conceived, it bringing forth sin. Sin, when it's finished, bringing forth death. Amen. I, and I know it. I've seen it firsthand. I met a man in the hospital years ago who was uh, back in the 80s when uh, HIV, when AIDS broke out. They didn't know at that time how you could get it. Uh, uh, people were uh, not putting their hands on handrails and, and covering up doorknobs and all this kind of stuff because they didn't know how it was transmitted. Uh, I was called to, uh, uh, by one of the uh, station nurses, the head nurse on a, on a wing up there. She said, we need you to come to this man's bedside uh, and talk to him. Uh, he's dying. And I said, uh, she said, but stop by the nurse's station before you go in. Okay, so I went by the nurse's station. She met me there, uh, and she said, uh, listen, he has uh, 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 AIDS. She said, I can give you a mask. I can give you a gown or whatever. Uh, I said, well, uh, you know, I, I don't know if any of that would do any good or I need anything or whatever. Uh, uh, and, and so I went in, and I talked with him, uh, and he knew he was dying. Uh, she uh, told me he'll probably uh, not last the night. And so I went in to talk to him, uh, and, and he said, uh, I'm glad you came. Uh, uh, thank you for coming. And he told me, confessed, you know, that he had AIDS. Uh, and he said, I, I was brought up in this area. I lived in Greensboro all my life at, at, until uh, recent years. And I went to San Francisco uh, and started living a life out there. Uh, and, and I contracted AIDS, uh, and I've come home to die. Uh, can you help me? What can you tell you? Uh, what can you tell me? I said, yeah, I can help you, or at least not me, but God can help you. I asked him about his church life. He had been brought up around church but never been saved uh, and uh, started out there living this life. And I said, well, here's what you need to do. Uh, if you uh, want to uh, see God, if you want to make it to heaven, if you want to know the Lord, you are going to have to reject uh, your sin and repent of your sin and ask God to save you, and he will. He said, but you're talking about giving up the life I live. I said, that's exactly right. I said, you cannot enter heaven living that life that you live because the Bible clearly uh, delineates it as a life of sin. It is an abomination and a sin against God. And if you uh, won't give up that life, uh, uh, then God uh, uh, cannot help you. And I talked and talked and talked. I was probably there for an hour. And ultimately he said, uh, I can't do what you're talking about. I said, but but you want to go to heaven? Oh, yes, I'd love to go to heaven. I, I want to know that. I, I know I'm dying. I'm not going to last long. I, I, I want to know when I draw my last breath that everything will be all right and I'll go to heaven. I said, well, you can do that, but God has a plan, and you have to meet God's plan. You can't choose your own. You have to repent of those sins. And he said, I can't do that. I like the life I'm living. So I said, well... That's your choice. I'm sorry to hear that. I had a word of prayer. I left. Probably a couple of hours after I left, he passed into eternity. As far as I know, he went out into eternity without God. A sad life. But we must come God's way. God has a plan. Lot labored, and then he left. He left at the last minute. You know, he left at the last minute. I mean, really, uh, uh, saved by, the Bible says, has a verse that says, like a, a brand from the burning. 
For God says there are some who will uh, be in heaven by the skin of their teeth, the smoke of their coat. The last minute you say, well, why didn't God warn him ahead of time? He did. God had warned him. If you back up and read the story of Lot, you'll find uh, that Lot became a captive. Uh, he was kidnapped uh, by the kings of those lands uh, and held as a captive. And somebody came, and he was already messing around where he shouldn't have been. He was held captive. Somebody came and told Abraham, they said, Abraham, your nephew Lot has been taken captive by these kings, uh, uh, and uh, he's being held against his will, him and some other folks. Uh, and you know what Abraham did? Abraham went out, uh, and he got his men and all the others that he could gather, and he went to these kings uh, uh, that were on his side, and he said, let's join together, and let's go, uh, and let's free these people. And they went and they made war on these uh, kings and they set the captives free and they spoiled them. They took their spoils uh, and these kings came out and said, Abraham, uh, uh, you can have all of this uh, stuff. Choose your uh, what you want, silver, gold, all this stuff. Abraham said, I don't want any of it. Don't want any of it. All I want is Lot and his family. And they said, but you can have all, look at all this stuff we got. Abraham said, no, I don't want any of it because if I take it, uh, uh, then it'll come around the saying that uh, we have made Abraham rich. He said, I don't even want a shoe latchet. I don't even want a shoe latchet. Now, somebody said Abraham could have taken that and maybe given it to the Lord. Well, he was smarter than that. He said, I don't want that. All I want is Lot. And so they gave him Lot, and they uh, they took the spoils and went their way. So Lot had already been captive. He had already been in danger. God uh, had warned him to stay away from that crowd. Uh, but what did he do? He pitched his tent towards Sodom, and there he went. And we find a lot of Christians today raised in church, gave their heart to the Lord, but slowly but surely they began to inch away uh, and they pitched their tent towards Sodom, and now they've gone to labor in Sodom. Well, let me tell you, nothing good is going to come out of that. You know, kind of like the old saying that nothing good ever happens after midnight. You know, so you tell your kids being here by midnight because nothing good ever happens after midnight. Uh, well, now it's almost nothing good ever happens after dark, you know. So a lot left, and then let me quit with this. He lost some things down there. By making the wrong choice, he lost some things. He said, what did he lose? Well, he lost his sons-in-laws. They laughed at him. They mocked at him. Why? Because his testimony was no good. They said, Lot, do you think we'd listen to you? You're supposed to be a Christian. We've heard about Abraham. You're his nephew. We know he serves God. We know he's an honest man. We know he's an upright man. But he won't even set foot in this place. And here you are, an elder in the city, and you claim to be a Christian. Ha, ha, ha. Let me tell you what. When you turn your back on God and you grab for the brass ring of the world, you're going to lose your testimony. And people are going to look at you and say, you claim to be a Christian. It's not an easy thing to keep your testimony. The devil's always there, always offering something to try to draw you away uh, because he wants your testimony. Amen. So he lost his testimony. He lost his sons uh, in law. Uh, his name uh, is still forever included uh, in the Bible as a just man, uh, but he sacrificed his good name. How many people do you know that you can say that person is a good man or that person is a good woman? Amen. Most folks have uh, holes in their testimony or skeletons in their closet. God help us to stay away from that. Amen. And then he lost his wife, his helper, his companion, the woman that he loved. Uh, the Bible said as they were coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, uh, that she turned back and looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah to see what was going on, which God had forbidden them to do, and God turned her into a pillar of salt. She had seen the clear faith of Abraham. I'm sure she had met Uncle Abraham. She had heard Lot talk about Abraham. She had heard Lot 
speak about his faith, his offerings, his sacrifices, his altars that he had built. Uh, he was known as the friend of God. She had witnessed this, uh, his dedication to the Lord, uh, but she didn't see it in her husband's life. Amen. We ought to have at least uh, uh, the desire that our husbands or our wives or our children or our grandchildren uh, or great-grandchildren would know, uh, uh, if there's nothing else about us, that we are a servant of the Lord. Amen. He lost his wife. She saw Abraham's faith, his clear faith, but she saw Lot's faith was not as clear. Oh, he had faith. He's a righteous man, the Bible said. But he had problems. He was a man of spiritual failures. He traded in his uh, uh, his tent for a townhouse, uh, uh, and there he was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. It'd be like me and you uh, moving to, to Las Vegas. You know, had some folks uh, one time years ago. They claimed to be. Christians, they went to church all the time. They could talk a good game. They'd tell you about the Lord, talk about the Lord. And uh, they came all excited one day and said, we're taking uh, PTO and we want uh, this time off. Uh, uh, will you approve it? And I said, well, yes, you're a PTO. You use it like you were. I said, what y'all doing? Oh, we're going to have a great time. We're going to Vegas. I said, Vegas? Yeah, we're going to Sin City. They even call it that. We're going to Vegas. Uh, we're going to play the slot machines and we're going to play the cards and do all that kind of stuff. And, and uh yeah, we're, we're going to Vegas. And I said, okay, well, that's up to you. If you can work it out with God. <laughs> Lot made the wrong choice. Amen? So let's be careful about our choices. Amen? Abraham, the Bible said, dwelled in the land of Canaan. But Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Two characters, both saved, but diametrically opposed. Let's stand to our feet. Hope you got something out of the message. Meet us back tonight, 6 o'clock for the evening service. And make good choices this week. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, Brother Raymond, would you dismiss us, please, sir?